Hey, hey, good morning. It's Mr. Nelson. Friday, May 8th, and um, I just want to introduce you to a couple new things today. So you're wrapping up your Hubble's Law Lab. You started uh, graphing recessional velocity to distant galaxies versus uh, their distance from us in Hubble's Law Lab Part 1, and now we're on Part 2. And before we get started uh, wrapping it up, I want to invite you to a conference if you have questions. This can be a little tricky. Um, if you click on conferences in the left margin, you will see that there is a new conference called Hubble's Law Lab Q&A. You can ask any question. You can type it up in the discussion thread or just ask it personally uh, between 11 and 11.15. And I'll stay on as long as you like. I'll help you out with that. Um, if you want to just hop on and say hello and smile, that's perfect too. But uh, anytime between there, jump in, join the conference, include your microphone so I can hear you. And today, when you're wrapping up the lab, um, I put together a very detailed video uh, in the discussion for Hubble's Law Lab Part 2. This video describing how to calculate the age of the universe from the graph the linear trend line that you've already created um, in the part one of the lab. Please watch this video slowly, pause it. It walks you through exactly what to do. And you are going to have different values uh, because you'll have different slopes when you when you graph your trend line, which is fine. Um, this is step 14 of the lab, which is really the, the, the most significant step. And all the other questions remaining in the lab um, are uh, just description summaries of, of your understanding of what Hubble did in 1929. And you will post that lab here, the final document, once you're done with the, the calculation and discussion. Uh, some people have already completed that. They did it on Wednesday, but you've got plenty of time. Um, I do want to highlight just a couple simple things about Hubble's Law. So you're in Chapter 24, and if you wanted to study this a little bit further, um, the first three sections, 24.1 to 24.3, offer some interesting insight. And if you look at, uh, this is a image from Hubble Deep Field right here. These are all galaxies. This came out in 1995, first time ever. Uh, we were able to uh, focus a telescope for a long period of time and realize some of those fuzzy objects, all of these, are... Uh, galaxies. And each of these galaxies has a supermassive black hole at, at its center, like you have studied. Um, and what Hubble did in 1929, this is the lab, he collected light from one, two, three, four, five galaxies. These are the same five galaxies you're doing in your lab. And then he looked at their, uh, their light spectral lines when he filtered that light through a spectrometer, just like you've done in class. And when he looked at these light spectral lines, he realized they're all emitting the same light, the same barcode of light, but the wavelengths have shifted uh, different amounts, different amounts of redshift, depending on how far away. The further away the galaxy is, the greater the redshift. The closer the galaxy, the smaller the redshift. And that trend is what you graphed. So this is section 24.3 on Hubble's Law in the book. You can go there for a little further detail. But essentially, as a galaxy's distance gets further and further and further away from us, is redshifting more and more, which means it's receding away from us faster and faster. So all galaxies in all directions appear to be expanding away from us, moving away. And since they're moving away faster for each unit of distance, that means that tomorrow they'll be further away and moving even faster. And next week, further and even faster. And next year, further and even faster. So their rate of recessional velocity is increasing, which means they are accelerating. That's the definition of acceleration. The, the universe, the galaxies are accelerating away from each other. And why? What would cause this? Well, we're going to get into that uh, next week. This week is just to study that trend. And that was a huge uh, discovery. And honestly, it was, if you, if you read through the, 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 the history of this, it was Einstein's very, very famously quoted saying, this is the greatest blunder of his career, not predicting this, because Einstein thought, the universe was static and that the universe was the Milky Way galaxy. You know, in the 1920s, 
the Milky Way galaxy was the universe. That's it. Everything was in there. Finite in size, unchanging, eternal, forever, static. And when Hubble published his results at the end of that decade, 1929, and said, no, 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 these there's many galaxies and they're moving away. It, it, it utterly changed what the universe is. And now it implied that since it's receding away, that if you run the universe and rewind, that maybe you could go back and realize, hey, you know, last year the universe was smaller and a million years ago even smaller. Maybe you can keep going further and further back and rewind the universe all the way back to when the universe was so small um, it was at its infancy, its beginning, the beginning of time. And that's what you're calculating in step 14. So once you get the slope of this line, you understand Hubble's constant, you get these values uh, for sessional velocity in kilometers per second per unit distance of megaparsecs. Take some time to read through that. Take some time to make sure you understood part one of the lab. Move on to part two, which allows you to calculate uh, when this uh, expansion began, uh, and essentially the beginning of time, which is what we're doing. And next week we're going to get into that theory. What is the big? This is the big, this is the foundation of the Big Bang theory. Now, why is it expanding today? Uh, we have not addressed any of those questions. That's all next week. These great ideas. Um, today, as you're exploring those topics, feel free to send me emails with any questions. Jump into the conference um, around 11 to 11.15. We could stay for another half hour. It doesn't matter. Whatever you need. Good luck. Until then, uh, wishing you well. Bye-bye.